workshops, professional development opportunities, um, in a way to, to really highlight the true activities of, um, and professional development that's going on uh, within the organization. Um, so I've got a couple sections at the beginning of my report each month that will provide highlights and kind of a narrative overview of what um, I'm paying attention to this month. So um, the highlights uh, for the month of March and early April um, are the following. Um, so our grant-funded um, ALA uh, PBS program, American Creed, which is a partnership with um, the League of Women Voters and the Library, um, got kicked <coughs> off this month. And um, uh, tomorrow night um, is our first screening and film discussion. Um, I'm going to be attending this meeting and, um, uh, and community conversation, and I would like to invite you all to participate in that program as well. Um, again, American Creed is um, the program that uh, is exploring the subject of American identity and citizenship. And um, this is also part of one of our strategic plan initiatives to um, foster more opportunities for our community to get together and uh, participate and engage in uh, community conversations. Uh, so we're really excited for this opportunity and um, we've got a website dedicated to this grant funded project and I'd like to encourage you all to participate. Um, the other item, uh, that big programming that our team has been working on um, is building up to its culmination with all of our programming this month related to our One Book Everybody Reads program, which is um, Rosalind Brown's Lake on Fire. There's a flyer that circulates around the library and features all of the programming related to, um, uh, to this event. Um, a lot of it relates to the uh, World Columbian Exposition 1893 and the role that Chicago played in that. Um, we are hosting Rosalind Brown on Sunday, May 5th at 2 p.m. at Wilmette Junior High School. And I would like to cordially invite all the trustees to attend that event as well. And the staff has asked me to uh, confirm um, who might be attending that event so that we can reserve a spot for you at the event. The other thing is, one of the things I'd suggest mm -hmm. to Anthony is that if another trustee would like to join me at the because we get quite a few people there, mm -hmm. just have a little sign. But I won't be a trustee anymore. I know, but I'm asking By others. <laughs> but there's there others. I'm extending it in case anybody wants to join me. And just having a little sign as to what's working, what any new ideas, and what might be improved. Actually, and talk. those of you who are leaving the board are still trustees until we convene the May meeting. Okay. <laughs> in April. Then that will be my last event. <laughs> but if anybody wants to join me there, I'll be there. Okay. Yeah, I'm Front. planning on it. Yeah, I'm planning on attending. Well. I have read the book too. Great. <laughs> Stuart, are you going? Yes, and, and uh, yeah. Do you want to join me up front at the, at the table? It's just sure. right before. I thought, yeah. I thought it might be neat for 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And nobody may pay attention to us, but in terms of just with a little sign. Yeah, yeah. Asking. They could throw things at us too. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're really excited about this event. This is going to be great. Um, I'm going to try and come, but I'm not a trustee. <laughs> well, you are. Yes, 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 Maybe I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that point, I am still. Yeah, yeah. May May you could, if you chose, okay. convene the opening meeting in May, because that's when we swear in the new, swear in the new well, trustees. I, as I said, I am going to try and be there. And I then read the book. We, um, you're not no. officially done <laughs> until we convene the second meeting Swearing in May, people. which follows I think three minutes after the conclusion of the first meeting. <laughs> 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 Let her retire. He's talking 2020, by the way. Just give the speech. <laughs> yeah. Everybody said goodbye. Right. We can't do, yeah. we can't yeah, do two goodbye speeches. We're not going to ban. Because well, there's so. more cook cupcakes coming, just so you know. What? There's more cupcakes coming, just so you know. Oh, well, 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 all right. Now you're reframing yeah. that. Whole thing. <laughs> then we'll definitely. If you're not there, you'll be marked absent to the opening meeting. <laughs> uh, I won't be there at the next board meeting, but I will try okay. to make the. Um, as I read the book, and I enjoyed it. So mm -hmm. very good. All right. Okay. So um, I just passed out some bookmarks as a reminder about that event. <coughs> And you're going to get more bookmarks. Um, you may have noticed in our highlights that um, this past month we had um, a contest, our annual bookmark design contest. Um, we had 51 children participate in the program. Um, all the bookmarks are on display right now in the Youth Services Department, as well as um, the winners. And you all have a copy of all of our winning entries from that. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is great. Enjoy. Thank you.
Produce. All right. Wow. Um, moving on through my report, um, I just wanted to, to update you all on um, the status of our digital resources. I touched on this briefly in yesterday's meeting. Um, we're really noticing a lot of strong circulation with our digital collections. Um, <clears throat> this past month was the first month that we had over 1,000 circs in our Hoopla platform. Hoopla is the, um, the digital resource that provides uh, immediate access to popular streaming digital resources. Um, how many of you have Hoopla on one of your devices at home? All right. I'm listening to it now. Do we have any testimonials about Hoopla? Uh, again, it's been, it's been, for me, it's been great. It's, again, as, as I said the other day, at, at our, I mean, it's, it's been uh, it's a great place to get um, sometimes hard to find movies uh, is what I've been using it for, um, and it's very easy to use, very user friendly. I find so. It's a, as far as I'm concerned, it's been a great addition to the library. Great. I like it because it's it's there in present. So when I was in Asia, I uh, got two guidebooks, but I could never get those guidebooks open when it was like 800 pages. <laughs> but you could download it, but it, you could get a bunch of books that are just there and it's on right there as opposed nice. to waiting. Excellent. Well, our patrons seem to be really responding to this collection as well as a number of other digital resources as you see in my report. So I just wanted to highlight that because that was a milestone uh, CERC number for us this month. Mm -hmm. um, we, I, as I have reported as well, we have begun um, collecting daily uh, circular uh, um, desk sets um, uh, for all the reference transactions that are taking place at our various service points. Um, so I've included that information there for your for your reference. Um, as you can see, our staff is very busy at our service points, um, and they take a lot of questions each day. So yep. that's um, that highlight. Um, what I would like to try to do on a more regular basis, initially we had talked about having a quarterly report on updates to the strategic plan. Um, I, I had a number of reports um, this month where I could provide you with the status on our progress to that, so I figured why not just try to do this on a monthly basis. So um, I'm going to dedicate a section of um, my monthly report to you all with updates on the strategic plan. So um, as you can see there, we've, we've made some progress on um, five of the objectives in our plan. Uh, what else can I tell you about here? Um, I did want to let you know that we are we are still moving forward with our uh, book drop at the CTA Fourth and Linden Station. Um, the book drops are due to, to arrive at the library this next week. Um, we have a design uh, for the vinyl wrap that's going to go around those. Um, we intend to wrap all of our book drops at, at some point here, but the design that we have right now, we're going to put on all three of the book drops that have remote locations. So as soon as um, they arrive, they're going to get their new vinyl wraps applied to them. Um, the Plaza de Lago um, will be the first to get it, as well as um, the one at the Community Rec Center. Uh, as I mentioned previously, we're replacing that, that book drop as it was struck by a vehicle previously and is dented. Um, we are going to bring that one that is dented back to the library and attempt to refurbish it um, as a replacement for one that's rusting out in the parking lot right now. Um, and then when we are able to do that, we'll wrap all three of them that are on our site here currently and they'll all have a really beautiful, refreshed, unified presence. Yeah, that's um, a good idea because we found that our new book drops were too high for people with smaller cars, so we ended up having to bring back an old one so that there's one that's good for vans and one that's good for compact. So hmm. never give up on the book drops. <laughs> so. That's true. And uh, it is also true that they don't make them like they used to. Right. Um, the ones that we have are um, that that height is no longer available. So that's another yeah. reason why we'd like to try to preserve the ones that we've got. Um, but we're really excited about the new ones. And uh, we'll be coordinating with um, our, our community um, representative that uh, was really excited about the placement of the book drop at, uh, and brought forward the idea. Um, so we want to coordinate and, and allow him the opportunity to be the first person to put the book in the book drop when we do our <laughs> ribbon cutting. Um, so we're going we're gonna to coordinate a ribbon cutting event for the book drop installation at the CTA station. And uh, I will invite you all when we've got a date set up um, to coordinate with CTA about that. Um, likely in early May. I'd like to be able to uh, include that in my May report that this is done and installed so that we can take that off of our agenda. Um, we're really excited about that. Um, beyond, beyond that, as you can see, um, towards the end of my report, um, I'm highlighting staff and volunteers. Yeah. 
and also listing um, some select meetings that our staff attend. I think it's a good opportunity for you to see just how much our staff is engaged in continuing education and professional development, how networked they are within the community, within uh, the library um, regionally, and uh, also a snapshot of, of some of the meetings that I'm attending as well. Um, I also want to include a section in there to represent our affiliates on a regular basis. So I've got a section for the Friends. And um, I'm really excited to report this month that um, the Friends have awarded the library $31,000 in support of our programming request. Um, we continue to be very grateful to the Friends for their generosity. Um, this, is, this really helps to facilitate some of our signature programming here, including um, our one book program, which we were just discussing, our summer reading club, which is coming up very shortly, our winter reading club, and um, also incentives, including the um, children's bookmark contest, which we just circulated examples of. So we're very grateful to the friends for their continued support. Um, I also received notification from the friends today that they have a succession plan for their new leader, as we have um, Joan is going to be coming on, Joan Fishman's coming on to the board next month. She'll be sworn in, um, and she has a new representative um, as president. So is it appropriate for me to report on that here? So um, Marianne O'Keefe will be the new president of um, the Friends of the Wilmette right. Library, yeah. and she I has been the really. secretary for um, for the Friends for, oh, great. for three years. Okay. No way. Yeah. Um, so good. we're excited. We're excited about that, and um, we have a meeting coming up in May. So I'll report on the progress at that meeting at, um, at the May meeting. All right. Um, was there anything else as part of uh, the statistics yeah. or my report that you all had any questions about or that I could report on? Um, I, I really enjoyed the fact that you services oh, did a, a March Madness um, in a theme, and I love the winning name book, which is We Don't Eat Our Classmates. So, <laughs> so that was, thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> so, but that. It's about a dinosaur for anybody who was concerned who was not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So did thank you, you for including that. I, I, I would have voted for We Don't Eat Our Classmates. Yes, I like, I like the author, and I certainly like the idea of the book. So, yeah. So. <laughs> Um, information, um, committee reports. Um, Could I, just one question. Who is the head of implementation that you, for this uh, collection? For Collection HQ? Yeah. Uh, Gail, Gail Rosenberg Justman is um, managing that project for us. Oh, okay. So that's just a new. Um, the Collection HQ is a product, I think we've, we've talked about this one previously. It's okay. an analytics tool that helps us to better, um, it, it sits on top of the Polaris integrated library system and allows us to better analyze the usage of our collections so we can really drill down and uh, um, better project um, usage of the collections. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, committee reports. Jan? Um, okay. A couple of things. Um, you've probably already seen that the Reaching Forward conference is Friday, May 3rd at the Donald E. Stevens Convention Center in Rosemont, and the ALA Annual Conference in Washington, D.C., June 21 to 24. Um, and there's an opportunity to visit the congressional reps at that point. Um, let's see what else do we have. The, National Library Week is as we speak, April 7th to 13th, or after we speak almost. Um, a couple of things that are just kind of fun. The, there was an article called Nine Facts About Libraries that you probably, or librarians you probably didn't know. They serve more customers than your local movie theater. <laughs> they help spies. There's an explanation for that one. <laughs> they help people to pass intensive background checks. They help preserve your favorite music. The Library of Congress actually has been preserving recordings in the National Recording Registry since 2002. Uh, librarians' job prospects are on the rise. And let's see, working in a library used to be considered too intense for women. <laughs> This is, goes back to the 19th century. It was considered too overwhelming for women to work in the library. Um, poor health, you know, on and on and on. Thankful these, these things have begun to disappear. A um, couple of things they call mental floss. Uh, just to revisit the Haskell Free Library, 
that we had talked about before that is uh, you can walk in from Quebec and walk out in Vermont. You don't need a passport, but you do have to return to your country of origin or risk fines. A um, couple of other things just of note. Well, I'll ask you while I'm looking. No, never mind. Some libraries went to extraordinary lengths to make their titles remain on the shelves. At Marsh's Library in Dublin, Ireland, historically, visitors hoping to peruse rare books in the 1800s were locked in cages until they finished reading and left the library. So thank goodness we don't have things like that quite anymore. Um, the library at Yale University allows patrons to check out General Montgomery, AKA Monty, a border collar, collie mix, and ser certified therapy dog for 30 minutes of companionship. Aww. Now that's a library of that's things sweet. that we haven't considered. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna ask you, what do you think the most borrowed fiction book of 2018 was? Any, anybody have any idea? I'm gonna guess um, Becoming. Mm -hmm. no, not quite. Fiction. Oh, fiction. 